action. Good morning, class. I'm guessing everyone's here to learn about the fishy merit badge. Well, great to hear. Since this is day one of the merit badge, we're going to learn about something very important, near and dear to my heart. First aid. That's a really bad first aid symbol, but this is a first aid symbol because we learn about first aid because we want to make sure you stay safe. All right. So, we're going to start off with something you guys want to talk about. What do we want to talk about today? Purple brains. No, not purple brains. That's close what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about puncture wounds. That's what I said. That's the first thing we're talking about. All right. So, puncture wounds. So, let's say you're sewing on something on your class A uniform. Here's your hand. You got your pinky, your ring finger, your middle finger, your index finger, and your thumb. By the way, a thumb isn't a finger, kids. Get that in your mind. It'll save your life one day. So, you're sewing. You got your needle in your hand there. And you're just like, yippity skippity, I finished. So you take this needle, and you throw it up, and it goes wah, 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 wah. And then you go to slap it. When you go to slap it, it sticks in your hand like this. And it, and it sticks in your body like that. So what do you do? Simple. You don't be a bitch. You pull it out and you let it bleed. Stop distracting the classroom! Pay attention! You just pull it out, okay? Ah. Don't complain about a stupid needle. Ah. Doesn't even hurt that much. I recommend a band-aid and some Vaseline though, that helps a little bit. So, that's the first part of puncture wounds, smaller puncture wounds. But let's say we're going to have a larger puncture wound. Smaller puncture wounds you just pull out and you let them bleed. Larger puncture wounds is a different story. So, I'm going to set the scene for you. So, you're walking in the woods, you come along the river. This is the river, rushing water. You got like a tree here. It's good that's a tree. You got like a tree here. Alright, you, you can say you have like a deer here or something. I like deer. No distracting during classroom. Pay attention! This is serious! You got a deer. Alright, so let's say this deer is just Jay chilling by this tree over here, just watching you, you know, doing your thing. You come up to this river, you're right there. And you're like, you're like, oh, I'm by a river. Let's go javelin fishing. So you pull out your javelin, like that. And you're like, I'm gonna throw it in the water. So you take it, like this, and you throw it in the water. Splash, it's in the water, you missed. Sure. Tim said it was spear fishing. This is my class, let me teach it the way I teach it, please. Good. Anyways, so you throw the javelin in the water, and out of anger, because you didn't catch anything, you pull it out, and you pull it out too quickly, and it goes through you like this, like that, it wow. goes through you. You see? So the javelin went out of the water and into your stick figure body. What do you do? Well, you just accept death at that point. You're in the middle of the woods, woods, this is the woods. You are in the middle of nowhere, by water, you have a javelin through your stick figure body. You are dead. You're gonna die. Don't even try and get help. You're gonna die. This deer is gonna watch you die and laugh. Look, it has a smile on its face, a demon smile on its face, because it gets to watch you die. So, moral of the story, don't go spearfishing in the middle of the woods. You will die. 